everyone. Um, welcome to our session. Um, thank you for, for joining us today in this session on how to engage the world back around child rights. Um, my name is Agustina Perez and I'm child rights campaign manager at Bank Information Center and also the author of this, this um, tool that is the one that we're using today for the training. Um, I'm sure my colleagues will paste the link uh, in the in the Zoom chat so you can access it if you haven't seen it already. Um, as I said, thank you to all of you, but also thank you for uh, to the Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action for accepting our session and for allowing us to be uh, part of the annual meeting today. Um, so during this hour, in this How to Engage the World Bank Around Child Rights session, we want to run Run, you know, go together through some of the steps that uh, Big uses, Big Bank Information Center uses in its strategy to monitor projects and to influence um, the bank to ultimately have uh, positive outcomes for, for children. So before uh, moving on, um, we already have all the, um, all the housekeeping uh, announcements already done. So I'm going to directly jump into, into the session. Um, so what, first things first, who is BIC and what do we do? So BIC is an independent civil society organization that in a nutshell advocates for the World Bank and other multilateral development banks to do more uh, and better for people and for the environment. And in order to do so, one of the many strategies that we have is to partner with civil societies around the world to monitor um, projects that we are concerned about or that the community are concerned about. Um, and we, um, when, when I say we partner with organizations, it's because sometimes there are projects that the World Bank has or any other multilateral development bank has that are on the pipeline or that are already approved that we see that it can have different impacts on different issues. In particular today, we're focusing on child rights and how these different um, projects can impact child rights. And even more in particular, um, when the, the child rights campaign focuses on preventing and responding on, on three main issues, preventing and responding to child sexual exploitation, abuse and harassment in World Bank and other multilateral development bank projects, in preventing and responding to child labor, and also in how this process can boost the child protection system, This is a work that we've started recently. And also we're exploring the intersection between child rights, the environment and climate change. So if your organization is an expert on, on environment and child rights, please also reach out to us because it's, it's something that we want to also start working on. And when I say we partner with civil society organizations, it's because of course the world has so many countries and we are only an organization that is based in DC that, that we cannot cover, of course, all the, all the countries. So we partner with other civil society organizations that work on the ground, that are from the ground, that know the topic, that know the government, that are experts on, on this, you know, in particular in this case on child rights issues, to monitor the to a, a project to see how you know how is it doing the project in theory, in its, the goal of the project, and how the project is going on in, in practice. So why this toolkit? We developed this toolkit as the part as as part or or in the context of the How to Child Rights series, which is a series of practical, high quality, um, tried and tested uh, tools that. Save the Children initiated in collaboration with, civil, with different civil societies around the world. So if um, we are going to paste as well the link to this save to how to how to child rights um, series so you can access it and see many other tools that are there. But in particular, the reason or, or our goal in, in, in developing this tool was to be able to support other civil society organizations working on child rights that are out there on how to influence World Bank lending positively for children or influence in general multilateral development banks to, um, uh, to have better outcomes for children. So, and we noticed that there was no such tool, you know, online or that any other organization has developed that. Had developed that. So what we, what we uh, decided was to draft this tool to support other organizations and to invite other organizations to be watchdogs of these multilateral development and to advocate for, for child rights before these institutions. So we wanted to break the ice and make it, um, you know, learn also more about the participants that are joining us today. 
we wanted to start with 20 years. So if you go to the chat, you'll be able to see the Mentimeter. I don't know if the, our producer um, can share the Mentimeter link in the chat. Um, and okay, there's a, the, the link. So please click there. And we're going to be asking all of you to engage in this by responding to a different question. So the first question, I'm going to tell, say all the questions as we start to feel uh, the response to this Mentimeter. Uh, but let's start with the first one. So the first one is, do you know or have you ever heard about a project in your country that is financed by any multilateral development banks? So you can click yes or no. Um, and now I'm seeing the five people, but please go ahead. And then we will also be just for you to like continue thinking and for those that have already like voted or introduced your answer. What do you, what do you know about that project will be the second um, question. Then the third question will be, um, if you know that this project can have, or how do you know that this project can, can have impact on children? And the last one is if you have ever monitored high welfare projects. So as of now, we are seeing um, that we have six organizations that have heard about the project. Well, now it's like six and six. So some organizations that are here have um, know about the project in their country that is financed by the World Bank. Uh, and some others are not are saying that they have no idea of this. Um, can we move to the second question, please? Since we have people that have already uh, voted. So um, when we talk about um, what is well, what um, what do you know about the project? I think, uh, or what is it about the project? What what is the project about? Uh, we see wash, for example. We see infrastructure, we see um, community building. Those are some of the many um, issues that a World Bank project or any other multilateral development bank project can, um, can be about. We also have health now. Um, we have regions, for example, the East Africa um, coastal area. Uh, we have, yeah, development project that, of course, is. is what the, what the World Bank and other multilateral development banks are uh, supposed to do. We have examples of one project as well, VESTA project. So maybe if let's go to the next uh, question to see if you know, if people is sharing, if they know about any, um, any, any impact on children, if they, if they know, if they think that they don't have um, and why, while we uh, wait for answers, Augustina, I think we're getting some um, issues with your audio. So maybe if you take out the AirPods, it will be better. Or if you connect okay. the AirPods to the audio somehow, because you're coming a little in and out. Okay, I'll take them out. Thank you, Kendall. Let me know if this is better. And if not, I can join via my phone in the That's next. That's a lot better. I uh, think it's better for everyone else too, if you can, yeah. That's much better, thank you. Thank you, that's great. Um, so we see that some people are saying that they don't know if they have impacts on children. Um, some people are saying that some of the projects that they know about are have children as part of the beneficiaries, as part of the target. Um, and we're waiting for a couple more um, people to to answer these questions. I don't know if people is able to 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 do so. Um, but if no, we can um, see the last questions, the last question that we have, that is if your organization has, so we have also um, someone saying that it has negative impact. So for example, um, school drops out, limited access to basic services, um, health, um, some other person is saying that yes, that it has impacts on children and it, that the project is about building hospital in a community, so that's great. And there are many ways in which a project that of course um, has 
um, a good, you know, um, idea or goal or a positive goal for for the community, for the country, for the development can, you know, without without being it on purpose can have like a negative impacts on on children as well. So maybe how many questions, how many people have answered the last of our questions that is about if you have ever monitored a project? And for one of the answers, I'm guessing that we will have at least one organization which answer is gonna be yes, but we want to hear from all of you. So we have four organizations um, uh, out, of, out of four. So four out of four, our 100% um, they're the ones that are that are uh, responding that are saying that no, that they haven't engaged the bank around child rights, that they haven't monitored um, a, a World Bank's project. So this gives us a lot of information, um, particularly to um, to see, you know, how to also like the rest of the speakers will co will come in. But the idea is that um, we will have uh, a conversation around with people that with people with organizations that are actually monitoring projects on the ground um, and they will be able to share with you more of their own experiences um, and this also gives us information and, and, and let us know how important is that we have a lot of organizations that um, are not you know that are probably have a great potential and a lot of training and a lot of capacity to do this work but since maybe they haven't heard or they haven't think that they could actually engage the World Bank in around projects, we engage with the World Bank around projects and to monitor projects and to um, you know, use this strategy to make changes for children um, are not doing so. And, and, and we're like missing the opportunity. This morning when I checked the, the World Bank's um, site, there were 3,600 projects active or in the pipeline and any of these projects can have unintentionally negative impacts on children. Um, and we want to see more suicide organizations in power and doing this work. So let's go back to our, um, to our slides. And uh, in order to strengthen the capacities of um, all the CSO, you know, child rights organizations and practitioners that are here in this session, we develop a training that is very hands-on, very practical, and that we're going to focus only in one of the many advocacy strategies that we are um, proposing in, in the how to, how to engage the World Bank around child rights tool. So we propose different, advo different advocacy strategies at a more higher and international level, at national level, at project level. So please um, go to our website, download the, the toolkit that will soon be released also. Now it's in English, but it will soon be released also in Spanish, Arabic, and French. Um, so download it, and if you have any questions, you can you can reach out to us. So as I was saying, the first strategy that the strategy that we're going to focus on today is project monitoring. And in order for to 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 monitor a world run project or any other multilateral development bank project, we have identified we had uh, a speak have identified three key steps that are super important to have in mind, and we have it one speaker. Um, for each of these steps. So on one hand, we have two big trusted partners that we're partnering with in, um, the, in um, Nepal and in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. And we also have two uh, bank, it's bank information center staff, including our executive director. And here, I wanna make a pause and say something because I think I skipped at the beginning is that Big Bank Information Center is not the bank. We do not receive funding from the bank. We do not receive funding from government. We do not receive funding from private the private sector. We really, we're really, really interested in being as objective as possible and be able to advocate for child rights before these banks from in a very objective way. So that is why for us it's so important not to take money from, from governments uh, or from the World Bank or from private sector that could then lead to conflicts of interest. So each of our partners, UEMA, uh, Chantal, that is executive director of UEMA from the Mo Democratic Republic of Congo, and Suraj, which is our um, the managing director of TPO Alliance in Nepal, will share with all of you their firsthand experiences on monitoring um, World Bank projects. 
specifically with the focus on child SEA, child sexual exploitation, abuse, and harassment, and how their experience have been. So the steps that Vicus has identified in order to uh, monitor projects is, first of all, review project documents. We need to know um, exactly uh, what is the project about, what is the country, what is it, you know, what is about, um, the, the, the timeline, uh, the measures that are around to protect, that are there already in place to protect children, to uphold children's rights, etc. Um, and then the second step, if you have, if you're not the community in itself and you're an organization, it's important that you engage with the affected communities so you can have a better understanding of what are the impacts of this project on the ground. And then it's important, step three and step, um, step four is actually implement, engaging and reaching out to the implementing agency, which can be, for example, in the case of the public arm of the World Bank, it would be the government, but it can also be the private sector if we're talking about um, the private arm of the World Bank, of the World Bank Group, and also reaching out to bank staff that are responsible for this project to be able to present the findings, um, offer some recommendations, see how things can change in favor of children. And then we have step five and also something that we call like other pathways, which is contacting uh, executive directors that are sitting at the board of the World Bank and or filing a complaint um, to an accountability uh, independent uh, accountability mechanism that the World Bank has that is called inspection panel to ask and to access to to remedy to to yeah for for to seek remedial action. In this case, both are um, optional and it really will depend on the specific project, the context, the results that you're having. Um, and another thing that in this case we're not touching upon, but it's very important for all of you to check and it's also, in our toolkit is that it's key when we monitor a World Bank's project, it's key to understand how the bank actually considers children. Where does, where does the bank consider children? In which way? So for that, it's important to know and to understand the self-regulatory framework of the bank. Um, so we did a summary of this, of these frameworks that are called environmental and social frameworks and that the bank uses in its, its lending and its operations. So we really encourage you to take a look at that and to you know, maybe think about project monitoring and think about advocacy with the World Bank in, in a way that is similar to the work that you do, but where you kind of like switch the language to the, to instead of, you know, you, maybe you, you can use human rights um, arguments and use the convention on the rights of the child to, you know, enhance and to protect child, children's rights uh, child rights before, I don't know, the Ministry of Justice or the governmental agency or secretariat of human rights, gender, child rights, but maybe this strategy and this language doesn't work for the World Bank and we need to use the bank's language. So that's why it's also a part that we have in our toolkit and that we really recommend you to, um, to check. So no further introduction. I want to... Um, jump to the first step and we have Kendall Tan for to explain us and to and to guide us through this step. Kendall is the child rights associate at BIC and this uh, you can see all the videos from all the speakers in the in the lobby um, of this Zoom event and the and the annual meetings. So I'm going to like just go directly to I'm just going to say the name and the type, the job title of, of the, each of our speakers, and you can read more about them on uh, the Zoom platform. But Kendall is going to run us through um, how to get ourselves familiarized with the World Bank website, how to find uh, information around the project, like the status, the goals, the timelines. Um, who is in charge of this project from the world, you know, at the World Bank, um, identifying measures that the World Bank has um, put already in place to prevent and respond to child SEA and kind of like get an idea of like what are the documents that you should like um, take into consideration, how to read them, etc. So Kendall, can you share with us a little bit more about your, your work and how do you do this in your day-to-day -day work? Absolutely. Thanks, Augustina. 
Um, so as she explained, the first step in project monitoring is to go through the project documents. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of how to navigate the World Bank website, where you'll be able to access a database of all the projects that the World Bank is currently participating in all around the world. Um, and as Augustina mentioned, this is a really important first step because it's where you can get familiarized with sort of the, like the basic details of the project, background, status, cost, that kind of thing. But also because the project documents are going to contain the um, explicit commitments that the World Bank and its clients, borrowing nations, are um, committing to. When Augustina talked about using the bank's language and policies and frameworks in order to make the strongest possible advoc advocacy case, that all that language is going to be located in the project document. So it's really important to read through them carefully. So I'm going to share my screen and pull up the World Bank website for us. Um, Let's see. Okay. I think you all can see that. So I'm going to type in worldbank.org. And uh, for practice, we're going to find the project documents associated with one of the projects we're actually going to hear about today, the Kinshasa um, multi-sector development project that is we're going to hear about from Chantal. So um, we'll use that as an example. So the database is going to be located under what we do, projects. And if you know um, the name of the project, you can always do a direct search. But otherwise, they're grouped by these sort of three categories, country, sector, and theme. So I'm going to show you how to find a project using the sector. So I know this project is a waste water and sanitation project. So I'm just gonna scroll down past all of these different sectors, click on that. I will go to the full project list here. As you can see, there's over 2000 projects that are listed currently in this category. So I'm gonna use these filters on the side to find the project I'm looking for. I know this takes place in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So I'll just check that and go. And here it is. This is the one that we're gonna be talking about today. So this will take you to what we call kind of the project page on the World Bank website. It has sort of a summary overview of the project and key details that can be really helpful in your advocacy. So here's the objective of the project. Each project comes with a unique project ID that you can use to make sure that you're accessing the right page and you're following the right documents tells you where it's taking place, and it also gives you sort of like a rough timeline. So we know that it was approved um, early 2021 and that the closing date is in 2026, when can, which can be helpful to know when you're planning out your advocacy. Another really important thing that it has on this homepage is the bank um, staff that's associated with this project, as well as the government agency that's in charge of implementation. So this is also something to look for when you're planning who to reach out to, who's a good person to contact, who you can start having conversations with. So now I'm going to go up and actually find the documents. So I'm going to tab over to documents here. As you can see, there's a lot here. So we're not going to be able to go through all of them. Um, but the Bank Information Center actually has a resource that will go a little bit more in depth onto what documents are what, what they include. Um, what information you can find in each. So I'll share that in a second um, after I after my talk. But I want to take you through an example. We're going to go to the project appraisal document first. So I'll just click on that. It'll pull up this page where you can download. So the project appraisal document is sort of a comprehensive overview of the project. It'll tell you all the project components, um, the context of the project, the background, what the bank is thinking, as well as any um, child protection measures or um, response measures. So if they are have anything built in the project around children and children's rights, it's going to be in this document and in others. So again, pretty long document. I can't go through all of it today, but in order to show you, I'm gonna do a quick search. Um, 
for the issue that we're focusing on today, which is sexual exploitation, abuse, sexual harassment. And just by doing the search, you can see where it comes up in the document and get an idea of what you might be finding. So here, for example, I see that they have actually have their own plan devoted to um, SEAH response. So that's something to definitely look for if you're monitoring this project. Here you can see that the project is rated high for environmental and social risks. That's also something to keep in mind. And then this mentions a project level grievance redress mechanism that will specifically handle um, SEA, SH complaints. So if you keep going, you'll see that it'll pop up in different places in this document. Um, and this gives you a really good uh, jumping off point for conversations with the bank staff, as well as your own monitoring. Um, so as you're reading through these documents and others, it's important to be asking yourself, you know, what are key gaps that you're seeing? Uh, what are red flags? What are your main concern about these projects? And what do you need more information on? And that is really something to, again, jump off on, on your discussions with the government and with the bank staff. Because it's important to remember that advocacy can happen throughout the cycle of a project. Um, it doesn't just happen once the project closes. So you can actually inform project design and implementation if you bring issues from the very beginning. And those issues you can find, you know, from the design documents themselves. Um, so that's all from me. I'm going to now pass it back to Augustina, but thanks so much. Thank you, Kendall. I hope this has been um, very informative for all the colleagues that are hearing um, us today. So now I want to uh, invite Chantal, which is uh, Chantal Faida, which is executive director of UWEMA, to join us and share her experience about monitoring the Kinshasa Multisector Development and Urban Resilience Project, also called Kinelenda. Um, so UWEMA is an organization working on child rights and gender equality. And the goal of the uh, this project, as, as Kendall also referred, I believe, what is to um, improve urban infrastructure um, and provide socioeconomic opportunities for, um, for the people. So in particular, I would like um, Ilana to run us through um, how did UEMA prepare itself um, to engage with the communities in terms of understanding the project documents, preparing, you know, identifying the things that they wanted to monitor by reading the project documents, um, going to the field, engaging with the communities, identifying the communities, um, identify why and with whom uh, to engage. And also maybe as a wrap up, we would like to hear as well, um, what, is, what is so far your main takeaway from the work that you've done? Um, so maybe here you can also touch base on what are those gaps that you identified that are, you know, gaps from, from what the project says in paper to what the project says in um, practice. So Chantal, uh, over to you. Thank you, Augustina. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm going first to apologize because my English is not uh, very well, but I will try. I will try with uh, your help. I would like to talk about uh, the project in Elenda in DRC. We are working with uh, Bank Information Center to review and uh, to work with community and see how the World Bank is addressed the project related risk to child, children and child rights. The first point, we start by uh, reviewing the document, the policy. I have shared the, the screen. I don't know if I can pass by the next slide. Can you see my, my Chantal, screen? Chantal, we see your screen, but you have control. We don't have control of it. Oh, la, la. I'm not able to pass. I don't know why. OK, uh, let oh. me see if I can request remote control from you. Can you give me control? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, we can go on. Uh, okay, okay. Yep. No, 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 no. Let's, 
let's go into the second slides, the second slide. Go, go, go ahead, go forward. Please, you can come back. Yeah. It's just going. No, no, this, not this one. No, this one. Yeah, this one, the first one, yeah. Yeah, we have started by uh, reading all the policy of the World Bank, and uh, we found out that the Bank Investments Project Lending is governed by the Environmental and Social Framework. This was the first document we tried to, to read and understand what the World Bank was uh, going to do regarding the Environmental and Social Framework. Apart from that, we found out that this, this, uh, this document we, uh, revealed that the, all the projects uh, which is implementing here in DRC, they are not able to, to use children under the, below the age of 18, because this is the law in uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. So they have to find out how to control this, uh, this uh, how can I say, the recruitment of uh, the labor. All the, the NGO or um, company which we're going to work on the project in Lenda, they are not allowed to use children below the age of 18. This was the first document or framework we read. The second was about uh, the ASS2 on labor and working condition of children. Children may be allowed to work on the project, but there is uh, some uh, risk, some uh, evaluation which must be done before using children. We must just see the 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 environment where the children the child will work and the the kind of the work which the child the child will be using will be asking to do this was the second document we can pass by okay no 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 the second one. Just come back, please. Hello, can you come back? Okay. The bank previous safeguard expressing, no, no, this is the second one. The second one, please. Chantal, if you let us know the title <laughs> of the slide you're looking for, we'll be able to find it for you much quick, much more quickly. Yeah, we are talking about community, how we engage community. It, the, the third slide, please. Ch Chantal, we can't actually tell what slide Chantal, number. Chantal, sorry to interrupt you, but since we're running a little bit behind time, can you, can you focus on who did you meet with the communities and why did you think it was important to meet with these uh, people? Um, to understand more what the project is doing and considering around child sexual exploitation, abuse, and harassment? Okay, thank you. So we, we, we have the, as I said at the beginning, we were in 2020, and uh, there is two projects, two specific projects. The first one is... Uh, about water regarding water in uh, Ngaliema, in a commune called Ngaliema, and the second one is the construction of the the um, the administration work in DRC. And uh, we start by going through institution and uh, make interviews. We ask of authorities what is uh, their involvement in the child rights. And after that, we go through NGO to ask them how they are, how they can um, evaluate the work of the project and which kind of uh, of uh, 
challenging they see and they can uh, address to the World Bank in order to correct and to find out how to protect child rights. And what we found is that there is much poverty and uh, this poverty is, is, um, is the one key which, uh, how can I say, which facilitates children to go through project and start asking for work. And apart from that, they are exposing it harassment, uh, sexual and abused because of this uh, poverty. And the further challenge is about scholarship, about education. All children in DRC, they are not, uh, they do not have access to education. So they do not know what is going or what is the, the rules about their rights, even their parents, even other leader of NGO. That was the two challenges we faced. And we continue to, to, to exchange with authorities so that they can go under the field and see where the project is going, the project of the World Bank, if the child, children right is, is following. That I can say. What I can say. Thank you, Chantal. This is very, this is very interesting because, in particular, I do remember that in our um, sessions uh, of like you know debriefing and seeing how um, how Wema was actually uh, doing this field work with this field work, um, we did notice that. Um, you reach out to a lot of people to understand all sorts, to have to really have a context and to really have an understanding of all the things uh, that were going on in the project, how, um, and, and this was really informative to understand what was the people seeing, what was the people concerned about, and use that for advocacy purposes. So that leads me to steps three and four, which are about reaching out once you you know, identify the community, identify the risk, identify what are the gaps between what it said, what it says, e, the what what document what project document says to what actually is happening on the ground is when you can start thinking about advocacy to design your advocacy strategy and to reach out so to identify to think about what are those recommendations that you want to make, and then reach out to the implementing agency, and also. Uh, to the to the bank to share findings and recommendations. So basically, to start the advocacy process. So for this section, uh, we, for this section, we have invited Suresh Koirola, uh, who is the managing director of TPO Alliance. Um, and Big has been partnering with TPO Alliance for some years now, and has monitored two different projects: a project in Nepal, um, two different projects in Nepal, both financed by the World Bank. But one was about uh, an irrigation project that is in, in one of the case box in the toolkit. And then another one that we're monitoring right now that is a roads project. And in both projects, we monitor child SEA and also child labor. So in particular from you, Suresh, what I wanted to um, for us to share with us is um, combining both experience of these both projects, can you tell us a little bit more about what worked for your organization when you were doing advocacy with the bank? What didn't work? What are your lessons learned? So can so other organizations can actually build on your experience um, and and understand more what were the outcomes in the first project? How much time did that take? Um, and, and what are you doing right now? And what are your expectations for the project that we're monitoring right now? Suresh, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Augustina. Can you hear me well? Yes, we hear you perfectly. Great. Uh, thank you so much for giving this platform and also you know, the asking this very important question. Uh, as you said, that we have uh, worked with the Bank Information Center since 2020. And uh, you know, working in two different projects uh, in the West, it is uh, irrigation project, which is called Moderi modernization of Rani Chamara Kularia irrigation scheme, is a phase two project, and the, another one is the road project, which is called like a road connect um, Nepal strategic road connectivity and trade improvement project. 
So uh, in your questions, like, you know, in a, in a, in a both projects, um, uh, there's a very different context. You know, uh, while we work with the, with the irrigation project, there is a, uh, some different dynamics, dynamics, and the project was uh, started uh, quite, uh, you know, the uh, years back. And uh, there is, um, uh, and, and then when we started our monitoring, when we went in the field, we, 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 we saw so many, you know, the concerning point and, and, and also, you know, the documented compiled those things and came back to the Kathmandu office together with uh, the colleagues uh, from the Bank Information Center at the first time. And then, and, and we actually managed uh, to have a meeting with the uh, implementing agency here with the government uh, and also, you know, the, uh, showing them all the, the results that we have found in the field. And uh, what we found in that first meeting with the implementing agency was they are very, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, supportive. They, 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 they received those uh, comments in a very positive notes and, and, and immediately they also developed some pl detailed plan of actions. And we had a kind of, you know, the feelings like whether those plan of actions will be take, taken seriously or not. Uh, so that you know, our next follow-up monitoring and uh, visits was was more focused on that particular aspect, and 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 uh, very um, uh, encouragingly, there was uh, some good good you know the progress in 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 many of the action points they identified. So it means like you know when you had a very thorough assessment and when you have a very detailed uh, verified information you collect from the field and when you go with the uh, people. Often, you know, uh, it's difficult in these sort of cases, like when and the implementing agency, sometimes even the bank, they probably make thing kind of thing like, you know, okay, you are coming here to to make comments, um, and and you know, you will not get uh, that support. But that's uh, but it's not all the case. I mean, in that particular uh, context, uh, we 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 got very positive notes, and then the, the the action plan was developed. Of course, there was so many concerning points. There was also some reported case of the child labor. There was also some SEA cases that we identified in the field. There was a very huge gap of community engagement on monitoring. There's also the local government. They were not aware on these issues. There's also the, you know, the, 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 the parents, uh, they're also not much informed about these child labor issues and their, you know, the lack of sensitization and awareness in the community. So actually going through all these uh, sort of, you know, the major concerning point and doing a very rigorous follow-up over the time period, getting into contact with the uh, implementing agency, getting into contact with the bank officials in Kathmandu, in the field office, also in the Washington DCs, and talking with them several times, there, there was a change. I mean, there was a change because at the end of the, you know, the our last visit, when we went to the field, we actually did not see any children's being involved in that, you know, the projects as a lever. So that means is a is a is a is a, is a progress. Uh, Otherwise, in the first or two different visits, there was we have seen the children, you know, the working there in the in the, in the school uniform, and then later on there was a, there was a change, and they also worked the the World Bank and the team in the in the in the um, community. They had a lot of you know the campaigns, uh, awareness raising program. Uh, they also had a you know the um, uh, so they took this this uh, recommendation from the monitoring team very seriously. So 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 at from that particular you know the last visit. We we were a little bit satisfied with 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 all the work that we have done together with the bank information centers. Actually, there was a change, and it's possible. And it's not that we are there only to commend them. It's there to improve the you know the uh, the quality and also the complies with the standards and the international conventions and the policies that bank has already formulated for their for their work over there. So that is for the uh, irrigation project and for the road project. Uh, it's just started last year. We had a few, you know, the visits over there. We also had a, a couple of meetings with the uh, implementing agency here in Kathmandu. We also had a, um, a meeting with the uh, with the with the uh, 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 bank officials together with bank information centers. We are into the progress. We are still reviewing their, you know, the plan of action and trying to uh, revise, uh, trying to provide uh, more inputs on on the lens of child protections um, and the and the gender sensitive, uh, you know, the approach uh, that we are. Trying to focus on that. So in that pro project, we are still moving on. So we we have to see the you know progress in in coming months and years. But but it's of course uh, uh, from the from the past project in irrigation project is really uh, I think uh, is is really uh, uh, worth working and doing this sort of monitoring work uh, into these projects. Yes. Thank you, Suresh. And is there any last you know tip? or recommendation or word of encouragement that you would like to give others because you've worked with us um, for a long time and you've been through two different projects 
So encountering like different, you know, profiles of bank uh, staff and government, et cetera. So is there any one last piece of advice that you can give us in like one minute? So, so all the rest of the organizations are encouraged to do the work that you're doing? Certainly, Augustina, it's quite tough. I mean, you know, this sort of work, uh, but it's a, it's a lot of passion and lots of follow-up uh, and, and, and uh, consultations is required. And many times the people won't uh, take you as a, in, a, in a positive notes, but, you, uh, but I think it's, 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 it's we need to be focused in our work continuously so that you know, we can justify, look, this is for the, for the benefit of the people in the community. And it's also the benefit of, for the project itself. So, so it's not like you know, we are doing something, we are criticizing someone uh, for, for not doing their work. We are trying to enable their work. We're trying to promote the, the you know, the things, what is happening in, on the ground. So I think in that sense, you know, if we continuously work, uh, it takes time because in the Rani uh, Zamara Kularia project, it took around, you know, the uh, three years that, uh, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, the time uh, that we invested over there, but, but, but of course uh, we can, we can see the progress and the changes. And also uh, as in your first note, like, you know, being independent, and it's, it's always give you a lot of you know the uh, positive vibes to to make the things happens on the ground. So so I think you know uh, we are not getting the resources from the bank. We are not getting the resources from the government. But but I think you know doing for the benefit of the project, benefit of the people. I think is is a very strong argument to convince and justify the people um, associated uh, with us. Uh, yes, Augustina. Thank you, Suresh. Thank you for for sharing that with us. And I hope that really this is an encouragement for the civil society organizations and the practitioners that are joining us today to actually monitor a World Bank project, to reach out to us. They can write to us to info uh, at bankinformationcenter.org if they know about a project and if they need help, uh, we're here to help. So that leads us to our last um, speaker of the session, which is Ilana Berger, BIC's executive director. Uh, I'm the person that actually started BIC's work uh, on child rights some years ago. Um, and in our, in our toolkit, we also say that one of the, the, key, um, the key steps that could be considered was to con con is, you know, be in touch with executive directors, bring their concerns to executive directors of the of the of the yeah and the board of the World Bank or any other multilateral development bank, and we also have drafted a section a section on access to remedy. So my question for you, Ilana, is um, when do you think it's good to engage with uh, EDs and why? And when do you think it's good to consider the possibility of filing a complaint? So thank you, and over to you. Thanks, Augustina, and thanks to all of you for joining this session. Um, as Siraj and Chantal have shared, you know, it is so useful to be able to engage in a World Bank project early on to understand what is going on with the implementation of that project and to push with the bank and the government for changes in the project. But what I get to talk about is when things go wrong, or when it doesn't work to try to get changes in the project. Because sometimes what happens is you identify risks for child labor, child sexual exploitation, or you identify, hey, this is a good education project, but it's leaving out children with disabilities, or this health project is leaving out LGBTQI plus children, and how do we get them involved? Sometimes you go to the task team leaders, to the project teams, and they're super willing to work with you. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes, you know, they are shut down. They don't want to talk to communities. They don't want to hear from civil society. They think their project is fine the way it is. And that's when it's helpful to go above their heads, either to senior management or to um, the executive directors of the World Bank or the other multilateral development banks. And the executive directors are the representatives of governments who serve on the bank's board of directors and thus are the boss of everybody in the World Bank. And so they need to formally approve every project. And at the time of approval, they have a lot of leverage over the bank to get changes in a project. But even post-approval, they can be helpful if they are asking questions of bank management 
or pushing management to improve projects. So that's that's really where they come in. And what you want to do is you want to you always always want to talk to management of the institution first, try to get changes at the management level. And where that isn't working, that's when you can send a letter or set up meetings with these executive directors. And that's something that BIC is always very happy to help with. Okay, so then what? What if going to the executive directors doesn't help and you have a project that's really causing harm? So we worked with a partner in Uganda to monitor um, a road project that was being financed by the World Bank. And along that road project, a lot of teenage girls were being sexually exploited by road workers. And we brought this to the bank in, in seven different ways. And they just kept saying, you're making this up. This isn't a real problem. This is a criminal justice issue. It's not the World Bank's problem. And so that's when you, you go to the what is called the inspection panel at the World Bank, but all these institutions have them. They are accountability mechanisms, non-judicial grievance mechanisms. And you bring a complaint that says you are violating your policies and causing harm with your project. And then the accountability mechanism will do an investigation to see if there is harm and if that harm is actually caused by a violation of policy. And if they find that there is harm caused by a violation of policy, then the World Bank management and the country that borrowed the money will be asked to put together an action plan um, to address the harm. And there you can actually get a remedy for the harm and you can get reforms within the institution to make it less likely for that harm to happen again. Now, this process is complicated and just like you wouldn't go to court without a lawyer, we wouldn't suggest you go to the inspection panel without help from an organization like BIC or one of our partners that works on these mechanisms because they're complicated and, and sort of how you use them is not super simple and straightforward. They should always be a last resort after you've tried to work with management and you've gone to executive directors. But if you ever reach that point and want to explore filing a complaint with the inspection panel, um, BIC is always help, happy to help with that and, and always fine to reach out to us. And we can let you know if, if you're likely to be successful and how to increase your chances of being successful. So I guess my, my last parting words are, we like to help, we want to help, we're happy to help. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, if you ever have questions about anything related to working with the World Bank. Thank you, Elena. Um, so I think with this, we have uh, gone through like the five steps and one more. So like we, we have been together through the how does uh, BIC do advocacy at project level? And how does big support organizations support communities to access to remedy also at project level? And um, we are really close to, to the end of the session. So my my last words will be as, as Ilana was saying, we are here to help and we like to help. Um, so I hope that after this session that it was really practical, really hands-on. You met people that we work with, you you met people that organizations that are that are out there doing this work so our expectation is that after this session you go download this toolkit read it um reflect and think if you know about any project in your in your in your country um that is affecting your community and and think about how can your organization that has so so much um expertise and experience on this uh, on on different child rights issues to to actually advocate and engage the World Bank around child rights. So I think that is the, the last thing that I had on my end. And thank you so much for, for joining us. We will share again our, our contacts. Maybe if we go to the last slide that we have, um, we have our contacts, we have Kendall's contact, my contact. And as I said, you can always also reach out to us to info at 
bankinformationcenter.org. Um, I hope you, you enjoy the session and you join the rest of the Alliance sessions. So over to our producer to, to tell and to uh, invite people, invite participants to the next session. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.